Hi folks, I'm Craig Taylor and as always a huge thanks for joining me here on my YouTube channel The Bushcraft Padawan. A couple of weeks ago I put together a video that talked about my ferro rod choices and selection process over the last couple of years, what I'd used, why I'd used it, why I'd moved on from that. I thought it might be interesting as a follow-up to that video, which is up here, I thought it might be interesting as a follow-up to put together another video, again relating to ferro rods, but this time talking about some tips and some hints that I've discovered along the way to help you look after, care for, maintain, and prolong the life of whatever ferro rod it is that you choose to use. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to show love for your ferro rod. Tip number one. You can have the best ferro rod in the world, but if it isn't on you, if it isn't close to hand, if you lose it, it's no use to you whatsoever. So first simple tip for looking after your ferro rod is attach it to you somehow. Now some people like to attach them to their knife sheaves. I'm not a big fan of that. I think that, that you're, there's some, um, you're losing some redundancy there that if you lose your knife sheath or your knife, you've also lost your ferro rod. So I prefer to separate the two apart. And what I like to do is to attach a length of cordage as I've done here. Just loop that cordage round, tie it off into a short loop and then attach that by using a lax foot onto my belt, not my belt loop, because belt loops can easily pull apart, belts are much stronger. Attach that through my belt loop and stow it away inside my pocket. Tip number two. Your ferro rod can and will corrode relatively quickly if you don't keep it dry. Now, there's one thing in terms of once you've perhaps finished using it in wet weather to give it a quick wipe over, give it a quick dry, either under your armpit on a dry piece of material or something like that, and put it away back in your pocket. That will help. More longer term though, and probably where the corrosion will set in, is if you store this long term damp. And one of the quickest ways I've seen of this corroding was, and I'm to blame for this, I kept this inside a damp, waterproof coat pocket. The next time I took it out, it had already, not this particular ferrod, but the ferrod in question had already started to corrode. Now I was able to scrape that corrosion off and, and rescue the rod, so there was no long-term damage. Had it been left in there for a year or for a whole season, I suspect that corrosion would have set in even more. So dry this off once you've finished using it out in the field and put it away. But perhaps more importantly, once you get back home, what I do is I leave this attached to my belt loop. I leave the belt attached to my trousers and hang them up. But I always make sure that I take the ferro rod out of the pocket and just leave it dangling in the air in my garage so that it is not in the potentially damp confines of my trouser or jacket pocket. Keep your rod dry. Tip number three. As I've said already, it's a good idea to have your ferro rod attached to your body somehow or attached to your kit somehow with a length of cordage. That's great. But if you look at that cordage, that cordage is attached in one way to the handle of the ferro rod. I've seen some ferro rods, and indeed I've got one you can see on the screen now, where that would have been a mute point because the ferro rod handle wasn't actually secure in the ferro rod or the ferro rod wasn't secure in the ferro rod handle. So whilst you would have never have lost the handle to your ferro rod, the really useful part, which is the rod itself, as you can see, easily became separated and you could lose that. So always check that your ferro rod, your ferro rod handle, and if you're using cordage, the attachment point to that are secure and regularly check them, I would suggest. Otherwise, you can be certain that you're gonna have a lovely piece of cordage, a beautiful handle, but potentially no ferro rod when you actually come to need it. Tip number four. We've spoken a lot so far about keeping this ferro rod secure to you or to your equipment. However, even with the best will in the world, there could be occasions where, in this example here, I take the ferro rod away from that secure attachment to use it. If I put that down now, it could be the devil's own job to find it. So what I like to do 
is to spray paint the handle or to paint or to in some way shape or form add some contrasting colour to the actual handle itself just in case I make that fatal mistake of putting it down forgetting where I've put it there is a good chance that I could locate it again rather than it being a black handle or a natural wooden coloured handle. Fifth and final tip for now but what about being able to look after your ferro rod and care for it and show it some love in terms of the way that you actually use it. A couple of points on this. Firstly, if I rotate my ferro rod round now, you'll notice that I've started to use it all the way around the circumference of that ferro rod. And the reason that I've been able to do that, or one of the reasons I've been able to do that, is the handle is asymmetric. There's no one place to make it easy to hold this handle. Some ferro rods have a thumb indentation in them which naturally means that you tend to use it in that orientation scraping away continually on one point of the ferro rod. That may not be good because you're constantly wearing it down in one spot it will naturally weaken and wear out quicker. If you have a handle like this there's no one place to, to correctly hold that handle. Let's try and get it back in focus again and you'll notice that I've been able to work my way or I've started to work my way around the handle leading to a more even wear of the ferro rod itself. You can see there as I'm rotating it round. Secondly, I see lots of people and I've been guilty of this myself in the past striking huge, huge sparks from these ferro rods that scatter all over the place Yes, on some occasions that might be the right thing to do, but more often than not, what you want is a small, concentrated, focused area of sparks as opposed to a, a fireworks display. If you're cons consistently scraping off huge amounts of the ferro rod, causing a massive amount of sparks, you're just going to wear your ferro rod down, in my opinion, much quicker for no extra benefit far better in most cases, not all, to scrape away a small amount in a small concentrated focused area. You only need one or two of those sparks to land if you've got a good receptacle for those sparks and you'll be able to, to, to process that into a larger ember and eventually into flame. Scattering your sparks far and wide, which might look great and might look really exciting, those sparks are then distributed over a huge area, much smaller chance of them hitting your compacted area of tinder bundle and you've wasted a lot of ferro rod as well. So I think one of the best ways to look after your ferro rod is to think about how you are using your ferro rod and use it as little as possible or use as little of it as possible for a greater effect. So those are my five top tips. What would you add to the list? How would you perhaps recommend or suggest to people that they can look after their ferro rod that I've perhaps not mentioned earlier on in this video? Do let me know in the comments below, either on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, where else am I posting this, Reddit, or anywhere else that you happen across this video. Do let me know and other people know in the comments section below. The subscribers numbers are growing. Thank you so much for that. If you are a subscriber, I've said it before and I will say it again, a massive thank you. If you're not, I've said it before and I will say it again, please do consider clicking on the link in this corner of the screen here so that you become a subscriber and you don't miss out on future videos. If you've liked the video, there's a thumbs up button, you know what to do with it. There's also a share button. It would be hugely, hugely appreciated if after watching this video, um, please do comment and like, I'd really appreciate that. But you know what? If you've never shared a video of mine before, please do. Even if you've already seen me share it in your groups, please do consider resharing. It will be one of the quickest ways that I can think of for me to increase my subscriber numbers. So please do like and comment, it's really appreciated. But if you've never shared before on this occasion, consider it an early Christmas present from Craig. Please do consider sharing this video. Thank you folks as always for watching. I'll be back in the woods very very shortly to bring you another video. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Cheers and take care.